Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia of Sweden attend a gala in Stockholm. Members of the Sovereign Prince family of Monaco attend a rugby tournament in Fondier. Crown Princess Mary of Denmark visits Vanuatu. And Princess Alexandra of Luxembourg marries Mr. Nicholas Baggery in Luxembourg City. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to Royal Daily News for April 23rd, 2023. In Luxembourg City, Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra of Luxembourg married Mr. Nicholas Baggery in a civil ceremony at the town hall on the Place Guillaume du. The 30-minute ceremony was presided over by the mayor of Luxembourg City, Miss Liddy Pulfer. Guests attending the ceremony included their Royal Highnesses Grand Duke Henri and Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg, their Royal Highnesses Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume and Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg their Royal Highnesses Prince Felix and Princess Claire of Luxembourg, His Royal Highness Prince Louis of Luxembourg, His Royal Highness Prince Sebastian of Luxembourg, and the groom's mother and brothers. After the ceremony, at 4 p.m., Princess Alexandra and Mr. Bagri met with well-wishers who stood in the freezing rain to congratulate the newlywed couple. An hour later, the lovely couple appeared on the balcony at the Palais Grand Ducal to wave to the hundreds of well-wishers. At 6 p.m., a reception was held at the Palais Grand Ducal. Guests included prominent local and national politicians, including the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Mr. Xavier Battelle and his partner, Mr. Baggery's family and friends, and members of the Grand Ducal family of Luxembourg. The religious wedding ceremony will take place next Saturday, April 29th, in the south of France. On Friday, in Munzbach, His Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Foyet, visited the Moutadorie de Luxembourg. It's a mustard factory. The 100-year-old company produces almost 240 tons of mustard and 160 tons of mayonnaise, mainly destined for the Luxembourg market. The company uses mustard grains from Canada and Europe whilst the vinegar contained in the mustard and other sauces, such as aioli, ketchup, barbecue sauce, and cocktail sauce, are from Luxembourg. During their visit, the hereditary Grand Duke was given a tour of the factory, as well as had a chance to taste, well, freshly made mustard. On Saturday, off the coast of Stafore, Her Royal Highness Princess Beatrix of the Netherlands, when sailing on her newly restored Lemsterrak boat, named De Grona Drach. A Lemsterrak sailing boat is a traditional Frisian sailing boat with a rounded bottom. This type of sailboat is not meant to cross vast oceans, say from, I don't know, the Hawaiian Islands to the Marquesas to Tonga, but she is, meaning the sailboat, can cross moderate distances from, say, the Netherlands to across the English Channel to England. Anyway, according to RVD, de Grona Drach was given to the crown princess, Beatrix, in 1956 by the Dutch population on the occasion of her 18th birthday. Since 2021, she, meaning the sailboat, underwent extensive and much-needed restoration. The total cost was roughly about 435,000 euros, which is actually quite cheap, to be honest with you. Anyway, the conditions were perfect for a day's sail, so on Saturday, Princess Beatrix sailed from Stavorne to another place I can't pronounce, but it looks like she had fun, and that's the most important thing. <laughs> on Friday evening in Appledorn, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands attended the reopening of the Palais Hetlo. According to RVD, over the past five years, Palais Hetlo has undergone extensive renovation. Quote, part of the museum already opened to visitors last year. With the opening on April 21st, the 5,000 square meter underground extension will also be open to the public. The extension was designed by Khan Architects and is located below the forecourt of the palace where modern architecture and 17th century architecture merge. End quote. The extension will house the permanent exhibition entitled De Aranje, 
In addition, there are various spaces for temporary exhibitions. During Friday's reopening, His Majesty the King was informed about the process of renovation and expansion work. His Majesty the King also viewed the exhibition De Aranyes and the temporary exhibition entitled Masterpiece. On Saturday in Fontvieille, their Serene Highnesses, Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, accompanied by His Serene Highness Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco, Her Serene Highness Princess Gabriella of Monaco, Mr. Gareth Woodstock, and his wife, Mrs. Rosen Woodstock, Mr. Sean Woodstock and his wife, Mrs. Chantal Woodstock, and their two children, attended the 11th edition of the saint devot Rugby Tournament held at the Stade Louis II. The saint devot Rugby Tournament is organized each year by the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation and the Monaco Rugby Federation. The event is also an international U-12 Rugby Sevens Tournament. 20 teams from 17 countries, South Africa, England, Andorra, Belgium, United Arab Emirates, Ecuador, Spain, France, Georgia, Mauritius, Italy, Luxembourg, Morocco, Monaco, Norway, Senegal, and Switzerland participated in this year's saint devot Rugby Tournament, a record number. The tournament features three activities. The international competition is the main event. Under 12 players compete for the final victory throughout the day, with pool matches followed by knockout matches. The Rugby for All offers initiatives adapted to children and young adults with disabilities. Rugby Tots accompanies children from 2 to 7 years old in their first steps with a rugby ball. According to a press release, this comprehensive program, quote, makes it possible to offer great celebration of rugby to the public and all participants, to recall the importance of this sport in the principality, and to promote the values of rugby, such as discipline, respect, and solidarity. Over the years, the Saint Devote Tournament has become an unmissable event for invited teams and for young rugby players who have the chance to grow and flourish along with opponents from all over the world. End quote. So, who won the Saint Devote Rugby Tournament final? Well, it was the Blue Bulls from Pretoria, South Africa, 6 to 1. Congratulations. Well done, guys. On Friday in Barcelona, Her Royal Highness Princess Alessandra of Hanover attended the Atelier Pronovias Fashion Show during the 2023 Barcelona Bridal Fashion Week held at the Fira Barcelona. Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mary of Denmark as patron of the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, accompanied by the Minister for Development Cooperation and Global Climate Policy, Mr. Dan Jorgensen, arrived in Port Vila, Vanuatu late last evening to begin their six-day visit to the South Pacific. The visit will focus on the consequences of climate change in the South Pacific. As I mentioned in one of last week's episodes, the islands of Vanuatu were hit with two major cyclones and two earthquakes, all within one week in early March. Having two back-to-back -back major cyclones is very unusual, but having major earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are not. Again, as I mentioned before last week, Vanuatu is located within the Ring of Fire, and out of all the countries within the Ring, Vanuatu is more susceptible to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The day began with the Crown Princess and Minister Jorgensen holding a meeting with the Minister for Climate Change, Mr. Ralph Regan Vanu. In the late morning, the Crown Princess, Minister Jorgensen, and Minister Regan Vanu hopped onto a boat to travel to Pele Island. The 1.7 square mile island, with a population of little over 200, was hit pretty hard with the two cyclones that hit the islands last month. Upon their arrival, the trio were warmly welcomed to the island with a traditional ceremony by the Pili Ura community. Thereafter, the Crown Princess and Minister Jorgensen visited a local school. The school recently installed a brand TV solar PV system, which was created by the UNDP Pacific, which provides solar energy for electricity, thus allowing the students and teachers lighting in the classrooms and library and access to the internet. 
Thereafter, Minister Regan Vanu gave the Crown Princess and Minister Jorgensen a tour of the island. During the tour, Minister Regan Vanu informed the Crown Princess about the effects that climate change has had on the islands, specifically rising sea levels, which has impacted the coastal communities in Vanuatu. The day ended with the Crown Princess and Minister Jorgensen attending a briefing on the current political situation in Vanuatu, Fiji, and other countries in the South Pacific from a European delegation in the South Pacific. Yesterday, in Woolwich, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, on behalf of Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, presented a new banner slash colors to the 4th Battalion, the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment, held at the Royal Artillery Barracks. According to the Danish Royal Court, in 1997, Her Majesty the Queen was appointed the Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment. Quote, this is quite a special mark of honor and appreciation, considering that it is only the Queen of Denmark and His Majesty the King of Jordan for the Light Dragoons, who, as foreign heads of state, are colonels-in-chief, while the role in other British regiments is performed by members of the British Royal House." End quote. Meanwhile, in Broya, Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark attended the unveiling of a bust of I.P. Nielsen in the Broya City Park. The princess is a patron of the I.P. Nielsen Foundation. The late I.P. Nielsen was a South Jutland politician and was a member of Danish Parliament from 1920 to 1943 for the Social Democrats. The unveiling marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of I.P. Nielsen. On Friday evening in Stockholm, their Royal Highnesses Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia of Sweden attended the 2023 El Gala Awards Ceremony held at the Grand Hotel. During the gala, the Prince couple presented the honorary award to fashion designer Mr. Angelo de Silveira. In London, Buckingham Palace announced that His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom has appointed the Right Honorable the Baroness Ashton of Upholland, GCMG, to be a Lady Companion of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, and the Right Honorable the Lord Patton of Barnes, CH, to be a Knight Companion of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. The appointment of the Knights and Ladies of the Garter is in the King's Gift. Appointments to the Order of the Garter are therefore in the same category as the Order of the Thistle, the Order of Merit, and the Royal Victorian Order. Also in London, it was announced that His Grace the Duke of Westminster is engaged to Miss Olivia Henson. The couple, who have been together for two years, became engaged at the Duke's family home at Eaton Hall in Cheshire. According to a press release, Miss Henson works for an organic and ethical food company based in London. The Duke of Westminster, his full name is Hugh Richard Louis Grosvenor, the seventh Duke of Westminster, is a chairman of the Westminster Foundation and the Grosvenor Group. He is also the godfather of His Royal Highness Prince George of Wales. The couple's families are said to be absolutely delighted with the news. And finally, His Royal Highness Prince Louis of Wales is celebrating his fifth birthday. And on the occasion of his special day, Kensington Palace released a new image of the prince photographed by Ms. Millie Pilkington in Windsor. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Monday, April 24th, with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great week ahead. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.